Thus the darkness consumes even my form in the end, casting me down into the proverbial abyss from which no light can be shown. And take heed, all who watch this, for it is our fate, every last one of us. The darkness comes, because at the end of the day... Oh wait, hold on a second, I just have to... Oh, th there we go! That was the problem the entire time. I forgot to flip the power switch on. I'm like, all right. Oh, man, that's a good thing, too, because I was getting to that level of edge where I was about ready to slice my finger open or something. Like, ah, too much edge, too much edge. Edgar Allan Poe, eat your heart out, right? Okay. So, uh, welcome, everybody. I'm Vampire Teching to the last day of the Six Nights of Horroween, where we talk about the six darkest moments of One Piece. Here's number one. Good night, everybody! Okay, okay. I'm not getting off that scot-free, am I? All right, all right. Uh, no, seriously, though, many of you are not going to like this, okay? So I need to go through my thought process on this before I get to it. I know many of you at this point are like, just tell us what number one is already so we can just get it over with. Like, no, no, you need to understand my thought process going into this. So if you're going to criticize me for it, you can at least criticize me with the proper context, okay? So when, when I decided I was going to do this, it was back in late September. I'm like, all right, I'm going to do Halloween this year. I'm going to make it a little bit shorter. I'm going to do six nights and I'm going to make it the darkest moments in one piece. I drew out a list um, of like at least 20 different, you know, bullet points of, of 20 or plus more uh, darkest moments in one piece. And I'm looking at this list and I'm like, okay, I need to, to narrow this down to six. And there was something I noticed that a lot of them, not every single one, but a lot of them had one thing in common, a, a common entity in the One Piece world that causes so much unabashed suffering and like, you know, there, there's there's enemies in every arc, like the Straw Hats have to face, and of course there's like Blackbeard, or Blackbeard, he's darkness incarnate, I could have put him on here, but when it comes down to just the straight up villain of the entire series, it's not just one person, it's a group. It's the Tenryu Bito, it's the world government altogether, but the Tenryu Bito, the world nobles specifically. And I just want to read to you now, just... Th this is all the stuff that the Tenryu Bito or the world government have affected in, in our characters' lives. The ones that we really care about. And this isn't even close to the level of suffering. This is just examples I can give that are named characters that have had backstories and elaborated on. There are literally thousands, maybe even millions of slaves in the One Piece world. The slave trade is a thing that continues on many islands and the world government doesn't do anything about it because they're basically running it. The Tenryu Bito have literally an entire army of slaves under their city running it. Okay? Like, and using it for the most frivolous things that you could ever imagine. Like, we're gonna throw a hundred men on a conveyor belt just so we can get a movable walkway. This kind of horrible treatment, but let me just go down this. This is every character the Tenryu Bito, the world government, have at least affected in a negative way. Trafalgar D. Walter Law, because of the whole Flevens thing, we had the world government that knew the amber lead was a horrible, you know, disease-carrying thing that was going to make these people sick and was going to kill them, but they did not care. They didn't tell anybody. Um, the, uh, the royalty of the White City, as well as the world government, were kind of in cahoots with that, just to profit as much as physically possible. And then finally, when the disease struck its ugly head, they just bolted out of there. They abandoned the city, and they spread this lie that amber lead is actually contagious, which it isn't. So that means law was basically shunned by society in general, all based on an absolute lie. The world government was the cause of all of that. Uh, Nico Robin burned her entire island down, killing everybody she ever cared about, including her mother, whom she was just reunited with, and her only friend, who she just had a few days ago, Jaguar D. Saul, just because they were trying to learn about the history of the world. Boa Hancock and her sisters, Boa Sandersonia and Boa Marigold, were taken away 
away and kept in a dungeon somewhere in Marijua where they were branded with the symbol and they were tortured on a daily basis, forced to consume devil fruits purely for the enjoyment of the Tenryubito. And it gets even darker from there. I'm not going to go into exactly what happened, but it was strongly implied that the R word occurred, okay? To the point where Sanderzonio, whenever this is even brought up, breaks down into a crying fit just from remembering the horrible things that happened to them. Fisher Diger! Not just him, but a shit ton of fishmen and mermen across the freaking seafloor were captured by the Tenryubito and forced into enslavement. Koala! Um, uh, Guild Tesoro, he was the villain in the freaking film Gold, but still, he had a shitty childhood for that reason. No one deserves to be a slave. And to cap it all off, Bartholomew Kuma, who, we still don't know the full circumstance behind how that happened, but, um, he, he is, he is a slave that's basically being used as a pack horse by the rich and powerful Tenry Ubito, and the revolutionaries are trying to save him right now, so hopefully that story has a happy end. Oh, really, it kind of doesn't, because he's been turned into a thinkless machine. Oh, here's my point. Even if I was going to keep this list to just nothing but what the Tenryubito had done, that's still way more than just six things. So I had to make a decision where I'm like, okay, I can either do a list of like, here are the worst things the Tenryubito have done, but if I'm going to do that, then I can't even address things like Brook or Big Mom whom I really wanted to talk about. So I'm like, all right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep, you know, everything non Tenryubito related directly. You know, I'm just going to keep that. And then, you know, so Big Mom, that's not related to Tenryubito. Brooke, uh, Nami... Uh, okay, I mean, Nami's backstory, kind of, if you really want to circumnavigate back, you can find it, because Arlong was the one that enslaved her, and the whole thing with Arlong is tied to Jinbei, and Jinbei's whole thing is tied to the world government, but that's very indirectly. Um, the toys on Dressrosa, Doflamingo was technically a Tenryubito, but I decided to give that a pass, because he's not a proper member of the organization, he's kind of been cast out, and he's doing his own thing, still really messed up, and, you know, but but he's not a proper Tenryubito, is what I'm trying to get across here. Um, but even so, I wanted to bring up the moment when him and his father and Roshinate, his brother, were crucified. Uh, you know, strong, I'm keeping in mind, Roshinate and Doflamingo, they were little kids at the time here, and Homing was a nice guy. He was very naive, but he was a nice guy. But the public didn't care. And I want to bring up that moment in particular, because that is where we get that, that angry mob that gets together to, like, uh, kill these people. And the angry mob is spouting off all of the horrible things that the Tenryubito have done. And that's like one of the moments that we really get to realize just how awful this system is. Like, I remember there was an old lady that came up and like, my daughter used to be a slave to the Tenryubito, but then she was freed. But even when she got back home, she was never the same. And she never spoke a word. And she was depressed up until the day she took her own life. And it's like, oh my God, we're going there. And, um... Yeah, the thing with Doflamingo and everything, I mean, he turned out horrible as well. But uh, still, just think of it this pers from this perspective. The people of the world, the citizens of the One Piece world hate the Tenryubito so much, at least the ones that have been directly, you know, influenced, like they, they know about, like, family members or friends that have been enslaved by them. They, had the, they hate the Tenryubito so freaking much that they would kill a child. Like, they don't even care. They just, they don't care. You guys are Tenryubito. I don't care who you are. You deserve zero sympathy. So there's that. So I'm like, all right, we're going to do five of these as other things non-related to Tenryubito. And then for the number one spot... Every moment related to the Ubito. Take your pick. Boa's backstory, Law's backstory. Robin's backstory, Koala's backstory. Fisher Tiger's backstory. Kuma's whole situation that's still going on. Pick any one of them. They're all equally viable, in my opinion. And I know that's the reason a lot of you are going to be pissed, because I, I titled this, like, this is the top six darkest moments in One Piece. This isn't a moment. I'm either targeting the Tenryubito as a system directly, or the entire world government, um, and I'm including a bunch of different moments from here. But, hey, you know what? If nothing else... <sighs> 
If you want to pick an exact moment, how about the present? How about right now? Because this shit is still going on. Yeah, Boa Hancock and her siblings managed to get away. Fisher Tiger managed to, to free a bunch of different slaves. Um, but th there's still thousands more, maybe even millions. We don't know how many there are. This is still ongoing. Uh, the human auction house at Sabaoni, that might have gotten destroyed. But how many of those institutions are all over the world? What about Tequila Wolf? That place was liberated by the revolutionaries, but how many other places all over the world exist just like that, where people are suffering just because of the whim of the Tenryubito? A Tenryubito could have landed on a freaking island a hundred years ago and could have said, I want you guys to build a bridge from this island to that island. Be like, dude, that's gonna take like over a century. Like, I don't care, do it. And then long after that Tenryubito has died, and long after nobody even knows why it's being done anymore, it's still being done because some random noble said it a hundred plus years ago. That's the kind of system that this Tenryubito thing encapsulates, and that's why the revolutionaries want to bring it down. Not the entire world government, but just the Tenryubito system, okay? Ah. <sighs> Man, what else? I, I, koalas is pretty much a mirror image of Nami's, except whereas with Nami, she was brought up, you know, in the East Blue under Arlong's reign, Koala was just taken directly to the belly of the beast so much. Koala and Fisher Tiger, their whole thing. Fisher Tiger freeing all the slaves and only to be me met with an unjust death at the end of the day. You know, he freed all of these slaves because Fisher Tiger really... I, I really need to make a video about him. I, I realized while making this list, I never made a Fisher Tiger video. That is criminal. That really is. But but, like, Fisher Tiger frees all of these slaves because he genuinely felt like, you know, we're all slaves, you know, we all deserve to be free. Doesn't matter, I don't care if you're Fishman, or a Tontata, or a human, I don't care. Everybody's freed. And then he goes and tries to, uh, you know, return Koala to her homeland, and he, what does he get? He gets backstabbed for it. You know, the humans that he helped, that he tried to bring back their daughter, he ends up getting capped off for that, and Fisher Tiger ends his life screaming out how we can never trust humans. Okay? And do you think any of that ideology would have occurred if it wasn't for the world government to mess this whole thing up from day one? Uh, I don't think it would have. <sighs> mm. So yeah, what, uh, wh what's your, what's your darkest Tenryubito related moment, alright? And it's still going on, and I, I have no doubt at some point, the Tenryubito are all going to meet their their well-deserved end. In fact, you know what? This is kind of what Blackbeard is trying to do. Hey, if Blackbeard wants to rally his entire crew together and then launch a raid against Marijua and then just wipe out all the freaking Tenryubito, I'd be there rooting for Blackbeard. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you be sitting there like, okay... He's the one that, you know, basically is responsible for Ace's death, and he's also the one that resulted in Whitebeard, you know, getting his power stolen, and Blackbeard's all around an asshole, but, you know, in this situation, lesser of two evils, Blackbeard is the lesser of two evils! That's not an easy thing to accomplish. But yeah, that's it. I mean, this is what it all came down to. All I can really tell you right now is, if you're ever planning on doing a list on the darkest moments of One Piece, you're going to run into a roadblock at one point where there's just, like, so much concentrated darkness in one spot that you could basically... I, I could, without any exaggeration, I could do top ten darkest Tenryubito moments, or top ten messed up things that Tenryubito did. Probably could do a top twenty if I really wanted to stretch it, but, uh... Yeah, so that's number one. And uh, if if none of that tickled your fancy, if, if none of that really felt like, you know what, that's cheating the system, <sighs> okay, how about the scene from a few chapters ago where in uh, Okabore Town you had the scene where a mother was holding a knife over her baby with a grandmother off to the side with a noose in front of her singing a prayer about how their inevitable end is going to come much sooner now because of a lack of food and an oppressive government. Yeah. That works, too. Anyway, hope you guys had a fun October. Happy Halloween! And tonight... <laughs>
<laughs> how do I how do I shift gears from that? Okay. Um, tonight at eight o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I am going to be doing a uh, movie night over at Smashcast. I'll put the link in the description below, as well as a link to the uh, the Discord chat. We're gonna be watching a horror movie tonight for Halloween. So I gotta go and edit this, get this up, and then do the movie night tonight. So thanks everybody. This has been a great series of videos. I have so much stuff ready for November. The last week or so I've been focused on this, you know, making videos, but off to the side I've been like jotting down a list. I have so many things ready to go for November. It's going to be a lot of fun to get back into the swing of normal videos. Uh, of course the review is going to be this week for One Piece Chapter 923, so look forward to that. Um, thanks everybody for watching. Vampire Teching signing out.